I did a video recently about the whole issue of this misconception that if you marry a Filipina, you marry the whole family, and they're going to bleed you dry, and that's just how it is. And as I discussed in that video, that will happen if you let it happen. What happens with guys who end up handing over money at month after month after month to their in-laws is that they never set any boundaries. Now, some guys go to the extreme and set down a moratorium that they're never going to help out their in-laws. And that's equally just as wrong an approach. If you're married to a Filipina, it doesn't take much common sense to figure out that her mother and her father are important to her. And if you care about her, by extension, what's important to her is important to you. So I'm fully in favor of giving support, not full support, but some support as she would give if she were still a single woman. Actually, we give a bit more than that. But what I am dead set against is the idea that I'm going to be some kind of blank check. And carte blanche, I'm expected to pay for anything and everything that comes up in their life along with their whims. That's just not going to happen. And having set down those boundaries, my wife and I have a very good, healthy relationship with her parents. The key being to set boundaries and say no when it's necessary. For some guys, that's too much work. And so, like I said, they just simply say no all the time or they say yes all the time. Either one of those approaches is imbalanced. Today, I want to talk about that very exact same principle and how it applies to your marriage or even your girlfriend relationship with a Filipina. And I often refer to Filipinas because this is a Philippines channel about expats going to the Philippines, but really this applies in your relationships with women anywhere in the world. Now, every once in a while, I'll sit down with an expat and we'll be having coffee or lunch, whatever, and we'll get on the subject of how everything just went south in our previous marriage in the West. And with hindsight, we can look back on it and say, yeah, I should have done this, should have done that, should have seen this coming, whatever the situation is. And in some of these cases, guys can tell me my biggest mistake and why I ended up divorced in my last marriage in the West was because I became a yes man. I didn't put my foot down enough or ever. I didn't tell my wife no. And that's the final answer, no. I never exercised my authority in the home. And the reasons for this, they would tell me, is because every time they tried to do that, there was such a huge backlash. In a way, it was kind of like living with a terrorist. If you put down some boundaries, they made damn sure that your life became a living hell in order to discourage you from ever telling them no again. And it would be anything from withholding sex to driving into town with the credit card and buying a bunch of unnecessary stupid stuff. Now, getting back to being married with a Filipina or being in a long extended relationship with one, I've seen guys make the same exact mistake where they go to the extreme. Either they say yes to everything that their Filipina asks of them, and that could be on behalf of her family or because she wants to do this or that, and it's really not what the expat wants to do with his life. So because they don't take a stand and say, okay, I've heard all your reasons, I've expressed to you my reasons against it. My final position on this is no, we're not going to do such and such crazy idea that you just came up with. And it could be a big thing. It could be a small thing. It could be something as simple as it's pounding rain outside. She's in the mood for a certain type of fruit and is insisting that you drive out in the rain to go get it. Meanwhile, you don't feel like driving in the rain. And that's not to mention the possible safety factor. You're going to respond either by jumping on your motorbike and driving into the rain when you don't want to do that, 
or you're going to tell her, look, I will get you some fruit, but I'm going to wait until this rain stops. And since that's out of my control, I'm not leaving maybe for another hour, three hours, or it could be tomorrow morning. And that's all there is to it. So you're not saying you're not going to get her the fruit. You're simply saying, I have a better way of handling this and we're going to do it my way. On the other end of the spectrum, you have guys who simply say no to everything. She has monthly needs for shampoo and feminine napkins and replacing her bra and her panties. And she has all kinds of different expenses. And if a man's position is, I'm not giving you any money. If you need something, let me know. And if I feel like it, I'll buy it. And to me, that's making the same mistake on the extreme end of just simply always saying no. And it's not very compassionate. It's not very considerate. And to top it off, it's a very simple thing to solve. You give her one or two hundred dollars a month and tell her, do whatever you want with this. You don't need to ask me every little time you need something. Here's a hundred, two hundred dollars a month. If you want to save it, save it. You want to send load to your sister, go ahead. You want to buy some new bra and panties or whatever it is you need, knock yourself out. Go ahead. Do it out of this portion of the budget that you will control. And problem solved. She doesn't have to keep asking you for money and all her needs are getting met. The answer is in the middle. And like I said, that takes just a little bit of brain power and it's well worth it to have a peaceful, equal understanding between you and the Filipina in your life. Now, there will be times when you tell her no, and she's just not going to like it. You need to stand firm. Let her have her quiet time. Let her have 20 minutes of tampo time to digest it mentally. But if you have made a sound decision because it's the best thing to do either financially or safety wise or efficiency wise, if you know you've made a good decision, stick to it when you tell her no. Now, not only does it help your household to run smoother, but there's another reason. Most good women, and I use the word most, not all, most good Filipina women come from a family where their mother and father are either still together or the father was around at least until they were like around 17, 18. They had a strong father figure in the home. I won't go into all of the psychological background on it. I'm sure you've heard it all before, maybe in YouTube or you're reading, but there is a transference when a woman who comes from a, a sound home with a, with a solid father figure and marries or moves in with a man where the dynamics she had with her father, she hopes to replicate that with her boyfriend or husband. And by replicate, I mean she wants him to have the same strong leadership that she's accustomed to from her father. There are other elements as well. If her dad would joke with her and kid her in a healthy way, it's great when her husband does the same thing. Her boyfriend, whatever the case may be, he gives her encouragement. He reminds her that he sees her as beautiful. He thanks her and appreciates her for the good things that she does. This is what she may very well be accustomed to in her relationship with her father prior to meeting you. And if you can replicate those same dynamics in the way you relate with her, things tend to go pretty smoothly. But one of the elements of her father figure was to set boundaries, to at times be the disciplinarian who says, we're not going to do this idea of yours, and that's the end of it. You go pout in your room, do whatever you got to do, but this is my decision. It's final. I've heard both sides. This is how it goes down. You learn to deal with it. And you will find that after she gets over her little temper tantrum and realizes you are a rock, you're not going to get emotionally worked up, you're not going to be manipulated to change your mind, she will come back to you in a very appreciative manner. But guys who always say yes never see that part. Just as your in-laws will respect you more if you tell them no every once in a while, the same principle applies with your wife or girlfriend. Every once in a while, not capriciously, not randomly, not to be mean 
routine or anything, but every once in a while, it's a necessity that you set boundaries and say no. So the answer is not the simple one that foolish men take where they always say no or they always say yes. You have to put your brain in gear, actually listen to what she's saying, examine the situation circumspectly, and then make a sound decision. And once you've made that decision, stick to it. You will find that she takes comfort in knowing that you can be this rock who is looking out for her best interests.